Dwayne Gateway C here with a really quick from the hip announcement. I am doing some live content right now. As you can see, we just did a Diablo presentation at DEF CON, and I was also able to take TaskBot to Mag West. I'll be taking TaskBot to Mag Fest 2025 here in a bit. I'm still struggling with health challenges and not able to work a full work week right now. Uh, content creation is a little bit slow, but I'm looking forward to things changing. One other quick note, I have joined Blue Sky, but not as the account that claims to be me. I will be hopping on with a tas.bot address, likely at duangoac.tas.bot. If you see an imposter that looks wrong, ignore them and maybe report them. <laughs> Thank you so much. I look forward to being back to good health soon. Until then, enjoy the rest of the Vault videos. We'll be continuing to dribble out as we can. Thanks. I have my cute little friend right here. Uh, I am here to talk to you about something that doesn't actually have a whole lot to do with TaskBot, but we'll get to that later. Uh, this is kind of an unusual talk for me because typically I've been at various different MagFests and MagWest events talking about tool-assisted speedruns on real hardware. And what I'm going to be talking about today is some unusual circumstances I have found myself in. <laughs> so. Somehow, I ended up looking at the game Diablo, which you can see here on screen. I intended to make a tool-assisted speedrun of Diablo thanks to some influence from a well-known speedrunner named Funkmaster MP. And Funkmaster MP wanted to uh, sit down and, and take the, uh, the single-segment runs that he'd been doing on speedrun.com and at Games Done Quick events and turn them into the best tool-assisted speedrun that we could manage. So we sat down together to try to make a tool-assisted speedrun. And we referenced the most interesting run we could find, which was Grubo's segmented run from 2009. There was only one problem. With task capabilities, we were completely unable to reproduce what we saw in that video that was allegedly done by a human a decade and a half ago. And that led us to some interesting questions and more questions. And now many months later, I have what amounts to the equivalent of a thesis paper and I get to present that to you. So buckle up, this is gonna be an interesting talk. Uh, first of all, if you have not met me before, I am Duango AC, I am Keeper of TaskBot. I'm normally uh, not talking about these types of things or presenting in this kind of way. So my slides are not slides. Um, I'm usually known for live presentations with video. I don't do slides well, so you don't get slides. Um, I'm gonna spoil it too much, but it just, just to give you an idea of what you're in for. Uh, the abstract of this paper can be found at diablo.tas.bot, along with the rest of the paper, I should say. Uh, so if you don't like this projector and you want to, uh, to keep up on your own or you're watching this at home later, uh, you can go to https colon slash slash diablo.tas.bot and see the research paper that I am displaying for you today. Uh, I decided to not slideify it. Um, the abstract of this makes some pretty bold statements. So I'm just going to skip over that. <laughs> so, I mentioned some of the background already, but what I really want to do is dive right into the meat of what we discovered and, and, and what we found in this run. So, I'm going I'm to skip over the, the front matter here a little bit. The very first thing we saw was an inconsistent title screen. Now, the reason I'm pausing right here is I had this screen up when you, when you walked in, when I started the presentation. And um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to watch this video in full. Uh, the whole video is, uh, the whole run is three minutes. This is going to be about a five minute video. And I want you to just watch this run and see what elements in here come out that, that might seem kind of odd to you. Now, this is a very impressive video. There's some really cool stuff that happens, especially if you have ever played Diablo before. You're going to see some things that seem interesting, for lack of a better term. So I'm just going to show you Grubo's speedrun, and uh, I'll, I'll step back a little bit, and you, you make your own decisions. Here goes. See if you spot anything unusual. Got my finger on the volume, because I don't know how loud it's going to be. Back a lot of 
Cristo. Like most speedruns, just ignore everything he says. The sanctity of this place. Who have played Diablo are already going to wait. What? The smell. shopping next this won't, this won't be on stream for long i sense a soul in search of answer i sense a soul in i sense a soul in search of answers i do not have a spell ready a while to walk through the shop. Every game is like this, right? And then your foolish quest. I love that it just keeps going. <laughs> and that's it. That's that's the whole run right there. That's just perfect. Um, so that that was Grubo's 2009 speedrun. Now, you might have possibly seen a few things, but it, it's it's tricky because some of it goes by really fast. So now we get the opportunity to use tools to review what happened. Now, there's a variety of different tools we can use here. In this case, we're literally just using a tool called Frame Advance. <laughs> we're watching the video one frame at a time, and we captured the screenshot. And uh, as you can see from this figure text, um, we can tell that, they, uh, that Grubo started the game, that he started the game on version 1.09. The reason we know that is because we went to the trouble of creating this massive table of every <laughs> single version. You would not believe how many hours went into making this table. <laughs> um, this is every single release of Diablo, every single uh, date that it was announced on a website uh, called Patches, uh, PatchesScrolls.com, back in the day, if anybody remembers that. I didn't, I had forgotten it existed. Turns out it's still on the internet somehow, magically. Uh, this has every single bit of information uh, for every release. And one of the things we could tell is that at the bottom of the screen, uh, the title screen says 1996 to 2001. And the version that was displayed was, in fact, 2001. This tells us that we know this was version 1.09 that was in the screenshot. Okay, so we've now established that Grubo used the most recent version of Diablo. Right? Um, the very next screen 
is the title screen, the, the, the single player, multiplayer select screen. And it says Diablo version 1.00 beneath it. So we are a few minutes into this presentation and a few seconds into the run and we're already like, wait, that's not possible. Something funky happened here. All right, well, let's keep going. The next thing that happened is if, when you watched that video, you might have noticed that there was no music playing while, the, uh, while Gerbo was, was choosing their character class. And that's because the character select screen has no music playing specifically in Diablo versions 1.05 and later. So wait a minute, we went from 1.09 to 1.0 to something later than 1.05. <laughs> We're three screens in, three for three. Let's keep going. Uh, now things get a little bit more dicey. Now, there's a lot of text on the screen. I encourage you to check out the di diablo.task.bot research style uh, document later. But in essence, what we discovered was that there were some significant irregularities. The game that is shown here is so improbable as to have never occurred in history. Uh, and when I say it's never occurred in history, I mean it, it, it's not possible to occur. We, I'm asserting right now that it was not done with legitimate means. Uh, here's how we know. We went through the trouble of reverse engineering the entire code of Diablo. And, the, and now, now I say we, I need to be contextual here. We includes a lot of subject matter, matter experts that help me with this. Folks that go back, in some cases, almost two decades of effort on this, if not more. People that did the Devolution project, that did the initial decompilation of Diablo, people that helped out with the Devolution X project, people who wrote specific code to help us identify the game seeds that were used. And the outcome of that is this chart. Uh, what we did is we determined every single game, a dungeon seed and game seed that was used in the run. Now, a little bit of context here, and I'll put this text on screen just for a little bit of, uh, of clarity. Let me get right back down to the right place here. Let's see, yeah, this, this is good enough. Well, I'll just read this section. Over the course of several weeks and scan iterations, the team reviewed every possible game seed, including invalid seeds occurring after the year 2038, <laughs> using our Diablo map gen software that we created. And effectively, there were no level combinations that matched what Grubo had done. Now, th there's a couple of things to know. Uh, we have an entire appendix, which you can read at your leisure if you desire to do so. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that, but you can if you like. Uh, but, um, basically, we went through the trouble of, of going through every single possible uh, game that, that could ever exist. And not just ones that could exist, but ones that couldn't exist. You see, the, number, the, the level generation code in Diablo uses a 32-bit signed integer uh, based on the time that you start the game. And it uses the value that it gets out of Windows in this case to determine the initial game seed. And from that, a number of dungeon seeds are generated. So you have one game seed and dungeon seeds that come from that. And it w you will always get the same dungeon seeds with that game seed. One of the problems with this, of course, is that in the year 2038, time stops, effectively. <laughs> the 32-bit signed integer rolls over. Diablo doesn't handle this appropriately. So after the year 2038, Diablo will always be exactly the same level layout every time. So get your games in now, folks. Um, as far as I know, the version you can buy on GOG.com is not fixed for that. It's, it's just built, built into how the game was made. So um, if you play after the year 2038, you will always get the same game seed because you always get the same value, and you will always get the exact same dungeon sequence. What we determined is that there were no possible places where a single game seed produced all of the individual dungeon seeds. That's not me. Okay. <laughs> so, context for anyone watching the video later, there was a ra rather unusual farting noise coming from the hallway. Okay. So uh, what we did is identified the every, everything in, in reverse. We looked through every single level that was shown in the video and reversed it to find the game seed it came from. And we were able to do that for all but two. And one was kind of fudged a little. Level, levels three, four, and nine were a little bit funny. So we have some notes on that. But everything else, we found a specific game seed that produced the specific dungeon seed. And curiously, the dates on all of these were 2008, 
1222, 1224, 1222, 1223. You might notice a trend here. Well, we know that Grubo made this run in 2008 and published it in 2009, in January of 2009. We managed to make code so perfect that we were able to identify every single moment that he started every game. So, except for a couple of levels, and we'll get into why we, don't, we weren't able to identify those in a second. Now, here's the issue. This is totally invalid. If, if, when we tried to make a tool-assisted speedrun, this is what caused us to go, what on earth is going on here? Because there was no way to create a game that produced the combination of levels that we saw. Uh, he had hacked them together from completely incongruous games. Now, we're going to get into why he thought that was OK later, but that's not OK. <laughs> right? That's, that's meddling. That was external modifications of the game. So, all right, let's keep going. One of the things that we found that was kind of interesting, if, if you watched this, uh, he picks up a thing that says ring. So we open this uh, sarcophagus, which I, I accidentally called the wrong name, and the Diablo folks corrected me. It is a sarcophagus in the game code. <laughs> so, um, it is not a cenotaph or anything else. But I, I call it a cenotaph because there's no body. And semantic ambiguity is how vampires get you. Anyway, so, okay, so there's a, uh, there's a sarcophagus, and it says you get a ring out of it. We don't know what that ring is yet. We do figure that out later. Um, that ring is not present in inventory uh, at 1 minute and 30 seconds in the video when inventory is open. However, back in town, the ring is suddenly there again. Okay, pick up ring. Ring is not there. Ring is there again. We don't see the ring being dropped or picked up in that time interval, so um, what gives? Okay, all right, well, let's keep going. This is another fun one. There's, a, there's some really interesting impossible quest combinations, and this one gets a little finagly. Basically, there are groups of randomly selected um, quest, out of these quest groups, there's randomly selected quests you'll have, and the algorithm has situations where you're gonna have two out of three, for instance. And I'm not going to bore you with all of this. The, the Cliff Notes version of this particular finding, as I describe it, is that there were some really odd inconsistencies with which quests were available in each of the dungeon seeds that were present. Um, so like for instance, this one we can see that there was a clean well. but a, uh, So we know that the poison water supply quest is not available. But if we go a little bit farther down, we can see the, that uh, there's the stairs in this area surrounding the LVL2. The dark passage would be present over here. The presence of this structure that would be just out of view in the video we watched indicates that the poison water supply quest is available, which completely contradicts the presence of a clean well earlier. So basically, we, we found all of these multiple situations where it just wasn't possible to have both of those in the same game. There was something obviously wrong here. And, and I'm not going to bore you with all of the different instances of that. There were several of them. OK, inaccessible dungeon level. This one's fun. Uh, so we have here dungeon level 9. I mentioned earlier that we found a level that almost matched, but not quite. Uh, the problem is that the enemies that are present in that level uh, don't come from valid times. So we found some game seeds that sort of produce the starting monsters that are present in this, in this seed. One of them is from the year 2056, and the other is from the year 2074. As we've established, that's no, no good. And that, that's not good. <laughs> so it's basically nitpicking the exact same problem we described earlier. Game seed should produce a set of dungeon levels, and we're seeing something that obviously violates that. Uh, missing gameplay. This one gets especially nitpicky. I mentioned earlier that one of the tools we were able to use was Frame Advance. Well, first we made a demonstration video. And in this demonstration video, uh, we had the character in the same DLVL9, which we manually hacked to reproduce because it wasn't possible to do it normally. Uh, but we did create the circumstances that Grubo had. And we had the character face down. And then had the character turn around. And you can see their right leg. And you won't be able to see this very well in the projector, but their right leg is behind their left leg. And then they walk forward, and their right leg is now in front of their left leg. It's, it's a little subtle. So that's our demonstration video. In the original video, character is facing forward, and case, a character is suddenly facing 
the other direction with their right leg in front of their left. There is a frame of video missing. Why does this matter? Well, you remove a frame of video at random moments and see how it affects the duration of your movie. <laughs> now, you can make a case that this is just an encoding error, that uh, maybe it had something to do with frame rate mismatches. But all right, a frame I'm not going to complain about. That you can possibly explain through how it was encoded in 2009. Tools weren't as advanced then, so on and so forth. However, there's a bigger problem. It went by really fast in the video that you watched earlier, but there is a portal to the unholy altar right here. The only issue is that it's already on screen and visible when the segment starts, meaning Grubo cut that section out. Everything prior to that is missing. Uh, you're not allowed to do that. You can't just remove portions of gameplay. The same thing happened uh, later on in the uh, at 328 during a teleport spell. Uh, so there's, there's just some weirdness with the video, right? All right. Made it really difficult, by the way, to directly correlate this stuff because we weren't getting a one-to-one -one match of what would happen in the video game to what was in the encoding. Then there was inconsistent item drop issues. This is also a little bit nitpicky. It kind of ties back to the exact same issue. Uh, the enemy that is killed in Grubo's run is this first uh, Lava Lord, and they drop a nauseous puzzler. The problem is that item isn't present in their seed. So that's a problem. OK, improbable item duplication. So items are duplicated uh, in various ways in Diablo. And we saw earlier that the title screen claimed it was using 1.0. Right here, you can see there's a nauseous puzzler in, in, the, in the player's hand as well as on the ground. So there's two of them. They've duplicated them. The only issue, and by the way, you can see both of them here in their inventory when they open it up in the shop. So you see that they've, they've duplicated that item. The problem, though, is in the 1.0 release, the game logic for item handling basically operates in a way that makes it really, really difficult to pull this off. So that implies they did not use that 1.0 version. So we're back to questioning well, then what version did you use? <laughs> There's that. OK, inconsistent music playback. This one's fun. We're going to start introducing some new tools, and you might recognize some of them. The music skips at a rather interesting time w during uh, the shop. And, and you probably heard it, but it, you'd have to be really paying attention to notice it. So at this scene, where you're approaching Adria, and she's uh, sa saying, I sense a soul in seekers and searching. OK, so we busted out. A spectrograph, because of course we did. Um, as the player is approaching, they're walking. In each of these lines is, ch -ch -ch, that's the footsteps. This right here is where the music suddenly changes. And this right here, where it starts to become really red, this is where Adria, the witch, starts saying, I sense a soul. This hard cut right here indicates a video splice at that location. OK. Um, Sure. Now, here's where things get interesting. We now know that they did a video splice at that location, and here's why that matters. When playing in version 1.0, if you are trying to manipulate the shop, uh, so for instance, uh, we have this set of inventory in the shop the first time around. So there's things like uh, a scroll of phasing and whatnot. Uh, but then, on the second page, you see these items. And the issue is that changing the store inventory requires additional gameplay, which isn't shown here. Uh, especially if you're in versions 1.0 through 1.02, it requires you to watch, walk all the way into the dungeon and return to town before it will rotate your inventory. Even if you are playing in a version after that, version 1.03 or later, you still have to do a save and quit and reload in order to roll the inventory in the shop. So we think that's why you saw that video splice right before that. OK. Well, then there's some other fun things. Inconsistent glitch use. So this is fun and really hard to see if you're not looking for it. Right here, do you see there's this little sliver of red? It's kind of hard to see because there's this gray background, and, uh, and the red almost aligns directly with the edge of, of this. But as you can see, the, like with this blue orb, they made the Diablo graphics with these orbs growing over the top of the UI. This little red section here is a little odd. <laughs> so the reason I say it's a little odd is because uh, if I go back to the video, you'll see that it goes from the bottom up. This is going from the top down. 
And the reason it's doing that is also present on screen. You have hit points of negative 22. Now, the reason this is happening is because they have applied a glitch caused by an issue that was patched out in version 1.07 or earlier. Now we're, we're back to our version problem again. What version exactly is this? They are obviously, Grubo obviously used a version earlier than 1.07 in order to have used this negative uh, hit point glitch. All right, well, what version is it then? Okay, artificially enhanced fireball damage. If you watched this talk from DEF CON, this is brand new material because we didn't even have a full understanding of this issue at the time we gave that talk. This came out over the course of various rebuttals and various other things I'll tell you about in here in a second. Uh, I spoke with Grubo directly on the record, stating it was on the record, and Grubo stated that he did notice some weird behavior after using a hero editor. Now, I know I have this in, in brackets. Don't worry, it's legitimate. <laughs> he really did say, say I used a hero editor. Um, basically, Grubo admitted to doing some things that caused Diablo to behave unusually unusually, but claimed that what was present in the final run was, in fact, legitimate. Uh, there's, only some, there's only one problem. We are very dedicated geeks. And when you tell us, no, no, it's fine, we're going to make sure it's fine. <laughs> Partly because if it's that fast in real life, we want to make it that fast in the TAS. And uh, this led to a a situation that was kind of interesting. Now I have another video that's embedded in the in the in this. I hopefully it will work without internet. Um, so what we did is we took the exact same circumstances of Grubo's video, the exact same character level. We we went through and adjusted for every enemy they killed and, and uh, made everything align perfectly, and we created a tool assisted speed run in well basically in the environment we had created, which was. Uh, putting Windows 95 in PCEM, in, in an emulator called PCEM, inside of a re-recording, what I call a re-recording framework, or like a library, called LibTAS, which gave us the ability to do frame-perfect tests in Diablo. It gave us the opportunity to use tools like going backward in time, making a snapshot or a save state, going back to that as many times as we needed to, frame advance, we can peek into memory and see the exact value of every single byte in, in RAM. We can see every single CPU register. We've got it all. So we did that. We recreated exactly the conditions that Grubo was using and recreated their fight. So on the left is Grubo's original fight, and here's an identical character in a TAS. Crap. Aww. Turns out I did need to, in fact, uh, be online to retrieve this file. So, okay, we know we got this right. We, we, we're very convinced we got this right. But then we asked, well, what would it take to recreate what Grubo did? And we, we, we did figure out how to do that. Um, we did thorough analysis of the Monster AI fireball damage equation, used trial and error to work out how the game had been manipulated into producing exactly the same damage. And uh, just to prove it, that we did, in fact, directly match what Grubo did, Here's another, another version of this. I don't think this has audio. Yeah, this one doesn't have audio. Um, so TAS, uh, Grubo on the left, TAS on the right. And you'll notice the two videos are exactly identical. Now, obviously, Grubo has a mouse pointer he moved all around because Grubo, but uh, Grubo gonna Grub. Uh, so, all right. We ended up with the most epic footnote ever. Because we didn't just sort of do this. We went all the way back to the source code. So a little bit of context here. If you bought Diablo in 96, 97, really, it was really 97, uh, and you looked at your disk close enough, you would find a version of the executable in another directory, just another copy of it for some reason, that just happened to have all of the debug symbols in it. <laughs> so we know exactly the names that they used for things because they were there in the symbols file. Um, and this is the original formula. You can look at this paper later and the, read the footnote later. But we broke down the spell, the character, and all these other things. Uh, and there's a rather complicated equation here. Uh, 
that effectively we determined that the task was only able to sync when using a specific set of values, 31, 32, 33, or 30, effectively. What, what basically we're getting at is we believe Grubo used a hero editor, a trainer, to modify the base value to be 32. It makes the most sense. It would be the easiest thing to do. And um, by the way, it wasn't like this was, was hard to come by because if I go all the way back down here, maybe we have so many footnotes. Uh, we went through, <laughs> um, I, I spent a lot of time working in this. Appendix B is all of the Diablo modification tools we located. And uh, it's not a small list. We think that Grubo likely used Boba Fett, uh, Boba Fett trainer, but that was by no means the only one we located. <laughs> some of these have really unusual names, and I have some uh, hand waving because I don't wanted this research paper to be more or less professional. I care a little less in this presentation about being completely professional, so I'm just going to read the sentence and then explain it, not that it needs much. Um, for safety, links are only provided to meta or reference sites that list tools for modifying the behavior of Diablo rather than linking directly to tools themselves that might violate copyright or other regulations, may be harmful, or are otherwise located on domains that no longer host the original content. I saw an alarmingly high number of pornographic images trying to hunt down these tools. <laughs> and they were not classy. <laughs> Like, wow, all right, did not need to see that. Didn't know that was still a thing. Um, so some of these were geosites. Some of these were a uh, angel pages. Or, I'm sorry, angel wind. Uh, an angel fire. There we go, angel. Angel farts? That's not the right one. Angel fire. Um, so there, were, there was some stuff going on. Um, needless to say, uh, we, we spent a lot of effort trying to figure out how exactly Grubo did all of this crazy stuff. And the answer is we, we couldn't. So our conclusion was was this, and then I, I feel like I have a few minutes, I'm just going to read it, because why not? Schadenfreude, right? The combination of conflicting factors demonstrate Grubo used illegitimate means to produce the results shown in the run, including using more than one release of Diablo, modifying memory directly to create an otherwise impossible, to create otherwise impossible dungeon level layouts and item drops, combining gameplay from different runs, and using gameplay removing video splices. Throughout the run, a number of artifacts and game behaviors indicate that Diablo version 1.0 is in use, as identified on the main, main, main menu screen, while other portions indicate that Diablo 1.09 is, is in use, as identified on the title screen. Alternately, other versions of Diablo, such as 1.04, might have been used for some sections, but crucially could not have been used for the entire run, given the conflicting versions displayed. Many of the game behaviors and available quests are mutually exclusive, indicating the run was spliced together from multiple playthroughs. Similarly, the game seed and dungeon seed combinations present cannot exist in legitimate play under any circumstances and indicate external modifications. Finally, a number of graphical and audible artifacts indicate video splices in multiple places, in some cases removing portions of gameplay in ways that would impact the recorded completion time. Overall, the team's analysis conclusively reveals the run was not possible as Grubo described without disqualifying modifications. The run should therefore be immediately retracted from all leaderboards. Now, I'm not asking for your validation. I'm asking for an honest opinion. Show of hands, who here is convinced by this review of this evidence? D just raise your hand. Do you feel like this is, this is pretty conclusive? Okay. For the camera, uh, only two people raised their hands. No. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Like most, most people look at this evidence and look like it's pretty conclusive. So of course, Grubo immediately contacted us a week before I presented this at DEF CON and said, uh-uh. <laughs> so this got into some interesting territory. You see, a, an author, uh, a journal, uh, journalist at Wired, Andy Greenberg, saw the presentation description for DEF CON and approached Grubo, but somehow managed to contact them through a premium message on LinkedIn. And Grubo responded that my run is a segmented spliced run. It always has been, and it was never passed off as anything else. Nor was it a part of any uh, competition or leaderboards. The Speed Demos Archive page states that, states that outright. There's only one problem. Speed Demos Archive is a records leaderboard, and you submitted it to Guinness twice. So there is a Guinness World Record for this run for the fastest completion of Diablo, and crucially, a second 
Guinness World Record, stating that Grubo holds the fastest completion of any RPG rank game. Concern. Um, so obviously there were there were some back and forths here. Now, I do want to say something, especially if Grubo is listening to this talk. Even after all of this, I cannot conclusively prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Grubo had malicious intent and deliberately cheated. I can only insinuate it repeatedly. <laughs> uh, ultimately, I don't want to call Grubo a cheater. I think what was more likely happening here is Grubo made a speed run and then made a faster speed run and then made a faster speed run and just kept tweaking reality of what was allowed and acceptable over the course of multiple runs. And by the time it was done, this three minute and 12 second run was impossible for any other human to even remotely recreate because every other human reasonably thought that you had to start a game of Diablo and, oh, I don't know, finish that game of Diablo? <laughs> Instead, what Grubo very clearly did, and after talking with him back and forth, what we know, Grubo started a game, found a level they liked, played that level, and at the edge, started an entirely new game of Diablo and just made all of the character stats match by using a hero editor or a trainer to hack the values into place. And apparently some of their hacking also conveniently modified the base damage uh, so that the final, uh, final enemy, Diablo himself, dies much quicker. Okay, so where does this leave us? Well, we presented this evidence to Speed Demos Archive. And if anyone has any recollection of Speed Demos Archive, you might know that they are not exactly known for rendering things quickly. Um, they very thoroughly vet everything. It took until about three and a half weeks ago before they finally rendered a full decision on this. <laughs> um, we've been working on this since January, so <laughs> took them a while. But they, they thoroughly reviewed everything, and they thoroughly vetted every aspect we put in front of them. They interviewed Grubo, and ultimately, um, the response from SDA was to post on the front page announcing they have removed every single run from Grubo. Yeah! So, justice is served, but this is bittersweet because what Grubo did might have intentionally, how, how do I phrase this? I think Grubo just got really excited, had a lot of fun, was enjoying this back in the day, just kept bending the rules a little bit more and a little bit more and thought it was okay, produced this run and then completely halted efforts to speedrun Diablo. And it had a chilling effect that meant that people just didn't try doing this, this segmented approach at all, ever again. Like no one even made a submission because it wasn't possible to recreate. And we now know why it was impossible to recreate. The method that Grubo used was not at all valid or normal. The response from the speedrunning community was, of course, to get pissed off and make a new run. <laughs> so. Uh, we now have runs that using modern SDA timing uh, would, be, would be a four minute and 36, minute, uh, four, four minute 36 second run. Uh, that is slower than three minutes and 12 seconds, but it's also done, you know, legitimately. Uh, the tools that we used to find the Diablo levels that Grubo used were very instrumental in isolating a real game that could be played legitimately. Now, what I want to do as a nice send off as I, as I conclude here is I'd like to show you a tool-assisted speed run. This is sloppy, it's, been, it's, it's still being refined, uh, there's still some things that can be improved, but you'll get the idea of what can really happen if you don't cheat in the sense of modifying the game externally, but you do do some superhuman things. So I'm just gonna get this playing. So of course we named ourselves TAS because why not? So I'm not gonna be able to commentate this perfectly because there's some crazy stuff happening, but right here, Yes. So, if anyone has ever worked with, uh, with doubling things, every time you double, it just, you get, it just keeps getting doubled. So you just only have to double it a few times and you have way more money than you ever need. So we're going to do all of the shopping right up front. So I this. sense a soul in search of answers. So we went shopping. <laughs> you remember how I said that it takes a long time to walk through town? 
uh, and it's kind of annoying. We don't want to have to do that, so we're just not going to bother doing it again. This is the only time you have to wait. But you do get to see the graveyard. I do find it very funny that there's this guy that's just standing up here, and we ignore him. He's just, he's always just going to be bleeding out on the ground. Yeah, tool assisted speedruns are brutal. Yeah, right? Now, uh, you'll note that the stairs were not the right next to one another. We had to kind of put some effort into getting it. This is a much more typical uh, situation for Diablo. You're, you're generally going to have to walk the stairs. But we did use a, a, a very interesting phasing method right there. We used a new glitch that was discovered in the time since Grubo's run that allowed us to do that more effectively. Right here, for instance, we know that we can do this section faster. Um, even with the stairs so close to one another, we now know we can use a different mechanism to walk. Uh, so that'll be improved in the future. Uh, but that was an example of a level layout that we found that was, was really nice. Like I say, the game, you generate the game, and it gener generates all of these dungeon levels. And this particular layout is really nice. Like right here, we just walked completely unimpeded, no enemies whatsoever, just walked right to the stairs. So, this is a legitimate game with a legitimate seed. You can find that seed in the diablo.cast.bot uh, documentation. And uh, we, are, we expect most human speedrunners to use this seed unless we find another one that would work better. We might find one that works better for task purposes, uh, but like right here. The smell of death surrounds me. Those stairs were ridiculously close. And he finally managed to finish his line, so there's that. These are nice. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, this is a real game you can play. This is in a valid time. In fact, uh, this is this is not even after the year 2038. It's a valid game you can play in Windows today. Just set your clock correctly and then start the game. It's in the past. Now, I did answer your question honestly. It's from 1994. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, it was in beta-ish. It is hot down here. Okay, so uh, this one, we, we have to get to this barrel, and oddly enough, that walk back and forth was very helpful. Now we have, have that ability to do the same thing you saw in the, in the run from Grubo, where we can just kind of... <laughs> Naja's puzzler is way OP. Do I sound old saying OP? Or do I sound young? <laughs> it's overpowered. By the way, our loading times are longer because we're emulating a period appropriate 486. Uh, okay. Yeah. Now you <laughs> yeah, thanks. Now, what's really fun is we believe this is accurate enough that we plan to try to get this exact 486 model and do this on real hardware with real input. We have to finish the task first. Uh, as of this morning, we have announced that Windows 95 tool-assisted speedruns are available on tasvideos.org. Uh, the work that I put in to make this happen for the Diablo folks was just announced this morning. It took a long, long effort to do this. So, <laughs> You would not believe how many hours I put into taking screenshots and, and swearing under my breath. Uh, my girlfriend here can tell you. Too bad. Okay, we're getting toward the end here. That was expected. That skipped. Away she was about to buy my stuff. Hey, I'm proving it's Windows 95, right? Um, that is a legitimate strategy. And we're just waiting here for a bit. Uh, well, off screen stuff happening. Just not rendering it, among other things. Okay. So we are near the end. And you'll see our approach is not that much different. But specifically, we never had to go back to town. We didn't have to shop again. We did all of our gold duplication all the way through. Fires. You would think something that was in hell would not be that vulnerable fire. We're just standing there. And that's it. He's blowing his blood out in the same graphic. So that is the task. Um, so, we... <laughs> we have contacted Guinness. Guinness is, first of all, notoriously... Uh, I can't say that word in this talk. Um, 
Guinness might take a while to respond, and we approached this very cautiously. Uh, I want to state for the record, I do not personally plan under any circumstances to take a Guinness World Record. I don't plan to submit Diablo to any leaderboards, SDA, Guinness, or anything else. I was not paid to do this. I, trust me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'm not trying to get anything for myself by doing this. We did this because we got irritated. And this isn't even the first time I've been involved in something like this. The last time it happened was when Todd, Ro Todd Rogers had a Guinness World Record for 30 years claiming he had the longest unbeaten speedrun record for the fastest time in the game Dragster, which uh, Omnigamer disproved, and then Passbot, my cute little fellow here, was able to recreate the actual fastest time on a real Atari 2600 with a real original Dragster cartridge and proved that the time that Todd Rogers claimed to have gotten was impossible even with perfect input, at which point that obviously raises some questions. And if it doesn't, well, talk to me later. I'll explain why that's a problem. Um, <laughs> so uh, Todd Rogers did not get a 5.51, just saying. Fastest time you can get in Dragster is 5.57. Changed my mind. I have a microphone. I'm at a table. What do you expect? <laughs> anyway, uh, so kind of closing this out because I think I'm at time. I don't remember I have 45 minutes. or anyway, You're all still sitting in the room, so you haven't kicked me out yet. Um, <laughs> so, long and the short of it, uh, we didn't do this for glory. We did this because we want human competitors to be able to compete on a fair, fair playing field. And when we release a tool-assisted speed run, we'll do so on task videos with labeling saying it's a tool-assisted speed run and that tools were used. The fact that we used task tools to find cheating from a human and expose a troll that had chilled a Diablo speedrun community for over a decade just helps to reinforce that at this point in time there is a really good symbiosis and, and uh, a parasympathetic relationship, I guess is one way you phrase it. There's a very helpful relationship between human runners that find routes, tool-assisted speedrun uh, glitch hunters that find glitches that then get incorporated back into real-time runs. The fact that these communities were able to come together to work out a response to this situation shows a lot of healing over, over the course of 20 years because there was a lot of animosity at one point. We were considered cheaters for making tool-assisted speedruns. And now I think there's an understanding that we're not cheating. We're playing the original game the way it was intended. Actual cheaters are people like this. But I didn't say Gerbo's name. I just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do hope to see a favorable res response from Guinness. Uh, we have contacted them. Could take some time for them to do their due diligence. Uh, I'd like to thank the authors of this content, who are numerous. I'm the main presenter and the person who organized all of this, but there are a ton of folks. Um, myself, a Jenbo, uh, uh, Staffan, uh, Fanta. You know, I, you know, I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to read it out loud. I'm going to br butcher these names. Okay, I can, I can say K Phoenix out loud, but um, some of these is not are not easy. And even Funkmaster, uh, Kavans, a couple other folks. Uh, let me try to say this name. Ephatha, Epitatha. <laughs> okay, that name. Um, there were a bunch of really, really helpful folks from the Devolution community. Seriously, thank you. Um, I know I should probably hold this to a reasonable time, but really quickly, are there any questions? Okay, we got four real questions. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so are you able to reverse the, so you guys are able to reverse the scenario that leads from the base alone? If you have the, uh, how do I phrase this? If you have a date, date stamp and epoch, 32-bit uh, signed integer value, um, and you use that to generate a, uh, a seed, you will always get that, the, the same seed. What we did was in reverse. Okay. So what, what we have is a document um, describing the Diablo level generation. The Appendix A goes through all of the details. And it also covers how we reverse engineered what Grubo had done. So, because we needed to go the other direction, we needed to take a video and then produce the exact seed. So we went through the level identification process, we used stills from that to identify a level layout. From that we used tile sets that we then matched up uh, in patterns and used the Diablo MapGen software to directly identify each of those locations. Now, the reason that this is kind of entertaining is uh, we, we have this chart here. We didn't go out fishing looking for these. Uh, like trying to force something to fit. These are the exact seeds that directly matched what we found out of the video evidence. And just to make the, make the point, 
we took other speed runs made by other people that was was made at a known time and we found their dungeon levels exactly so we know that because all of these were in 2008 at the time grubo made these levels that we did it right So this, this is, a, to answer your question, Grubo made what was called a segmented speedrun. And segmented generally happens at a level edge, but in this case, Grubo was a little loose with that definition. Grubo claims there were 27 segments in this run. Apparently, one of those segments was right before going to the shop without including the fact that they were rolling the, uh, anyway, but that, that's beside the point. Uh, they produced a video in the format that was required in 2009, but we have the original timing documentation. I don't have liberty to share it, but I have seen the original timing information from SDA, and it is missing some of the the stated uh, splice points. Uh, there are there are some that are just missing outright. So this is like a, uh, a digital recording that you have on your device. It's a digital recording. Yeah, this was made in a PC. Uh, okay. So it's not at all like the uh, PC. Correct. Hey, before you guys run out, can I take a picture of you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm gonna have to go to the wine angle. Okay, there we go. Uh, Everyone say hi. hi. Thank you. Okay. okay. So that was what was interesting. So it wasn't a white dot so much as it was a red circle at the top. When their health went negative, it wrapped the graphic around too. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Sorry. Yeah, the question was whether that white dot that was present was was uh, was important. Yes, we legitimately did it. Uh, really quick question: Is there another talk after this one? Okay. Uh, okay. Just checking. I don't want to make sure. I want to make sure I'm not causing anyone trouble. If there's a volunteer in this room that is like, I have to go on break, let me know. Okay, continue. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes. I can tell you exactly which one it was. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna be fine then. Yeah, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be wrapping up in like ten minutes, not thirty. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I can actually tell you exactly. Uh, what it was, uh, because I uh, I have the files right here. Um, if you go to the uh, and I might even be able to. You know what? I'm just gonna do it. I've, I've got I've got it right here. I might as well. I do I still have my uh, hot spot up? I think I, yes, I do. We're just going to see what breaks. So if I go to taskvideos.org and go to the progress report, you can see there's a ton of interesting stuff. And one of the new things that was announced on Task Videos today was the acceptance of Windows 95 passes. Uh, there is, oh, whoops, that's the wrong link. Uh -huh. Oh, what did I just do? <laughs> there we go. There we go, okay. So this guide, I put so much effort into this. Um, there is a specific Windows uh, uh, a set of set of hardware requirements you'll need for Windows, and we have configuration pages for each of these. Uh, it took me so long to write all of this out. You need specifically these files because you are using specifically uh, this hardware. It's a Gigabyte GA six uh, six eight six BX uh, Pentium. Actually, I said it was a Pentium. Uh, I said it was a four eighty six. We actually did it on a Pentium two for speed reasons. So it's a Pentium 2, 233, 256 megs of RAM. Uh, we did use a Voodoo 3, <laughs> a few other things. Um, but just to, say that, just to say that I put a lot of effort into this, um, these are screenshots sh showing you exactly how to install Windows in exactly the right way to, cre to create, I'm just gonna go all the way through this, how every single screenshot you need to create the machine so that you get a binary identical environment that you can then play back our tool assisted speedrun on the exact same hardware on the exact same configuration of windows so anyway and finally um, that actually is on another <laughs>
So for the purposes of task videos, we are all about determinism. And for instance, if you're playing on an original NES, this is relatively easy. The only source of randomness that seeds the pseudorandom generator is player input on the controller. So when you power on the console, as long as you provide the exact sequence of button presses, you will always get exactly the same outcome from the pseudorandom of the generator. And as a result, your Hammer Brothers will always move the same location on the screen. On the other hand, on a PC, there are a lot more complications. If you had a different clock speed, things would run at a different rate and all kinds of things. In order to do this, the tool assisted speedrun I just showed you was produced by using this specific set of hardware with an emulator that made sure that everything was in lockstep. Um, so we, we took the PCEM emulator. I think I'm out of time. <laughs> oh, okay. You're just counting. <laughs> okay. Um, with that specific config inside of this, this framework for libtask, that gave us all of the determinism we needed to be able to do, to do this, to make a tool assisted speedrun. Now, to answer your question for real time runners, no. Yeah, the uh, SDA is, yeah. Yeah. But that's also why loading times are not included now in modern timings. Yeah. That's precisely why. Every segment also incurs a penalty, or at least used to. I don't know how they're, the exact formula they can explain it at SDA. Okay. Correct. We believe that because those are the only two items, uh, places where items were collected, we believe that those were modified externally, which is why we can't find them. So as I demonstrated earlier in the talk, there is an entire appendix of all of the tools we think they may have used, and we cannot confirm which tools they did or did not use. We found many sets of tools that could reproduce. So the question is, when did I figure out that, that something was wrong and why did I decide to pursue this? Basically, I met with Funkmaster MP, actually with my girlfriend at the time. We were at MAGFest, I'm sorry, we were at uh, AGDQ 2024, earlier this year in January. Ran into Funkmaster MP and we started talking about making a tool, uh, a tool assisted speed run, not just a, a, a speed run, but a tool assisted speed run of Diablo. And after that chat, we worked out how to get this Windows 95, originally Windows XP environment, but ultimately Windows 95 environment going and how we could make a, a tool assisted speedrun of Diablo. We sat down to try to do that and we couldn't recreate the level sequence from Grubo. And we immediately knew something was wrong and then we had to figure out, well, well okay, so what are we doing wrong? And we went in with this with the understanding that we had messed up. And we couldn't find anything wrong with us. All we found was a lot more alarming things wrong with the run. <laughs> Let's see who else had their hand up. Uh, in an emulator or the, something that's possible on a real console? Okay, my favorite thing that's possible on a real console that we figured out with tools, and this is gonna be fast and really geeky. Earlier today at MagWest, really, if you're watching this video later, uh, first of all, thank you for suffering through all this Q&A. Second of all, you should come to a MagWest or MagFest in person because the real fun stuff happens here. Uh, earlier today, I was, or not yesterday, I was uh, showing off Super Mario Brothers 3 uh, as being played by Taskbot. And at the very end, I was demonstrating something really crazy. You see, every Nintendo console was released with a hardware flaw that meant that you couldn't play PCM audio at the same time that you were asking the controller for input. They would collide on the open bus, and uh, you would end up with extra button presses. To combat that, they'd already shipped a million consoles to the United States. They had to fix it in software. So Super Mario Bros. 3 reads the controller and reads it again. And if they don't match, it throws the first one away and reads it again. Normally, that's just fine because the chances of it happening is rare anyway. But what if you're us? And what if you're not exactly being kind? Uh, what we did is every time it asked for a different button press, uh, or for the, for, the, for the controller input, we just gave it a different set of input every single time. Normally, a human couldn't press and release that quickly because uh, we're talking about two poles of the controller in the same frame. But we can do it. 
And we keep it so busy doing, house, uh, doing other things that it doesn't do the housekeeping it normally do, it hits a non-maskable interrupt, which basically happens when it needs to draw the screen. And instead of doing what it should do, it lands on a, what's called a sled of no ops, no operations, that happens to run into a value, a hexadecimal opcode, 0x20, that is the opcode that means jump to the address that follows. The next two bytes are a relative address, jump to that relative ad a memory address. And of course, we still control what buttons we're pressing on the controller, and the next two bytes just happen to be the memory locations for the controller input, so we press the correct combination of buttons on the controller to jump to the end credits. <laughs> it's not fun to watch, it's really fun to hear about, because we beat Super Mario Brothers 3 in like uh, 12 frames, 17 frames, I can't remember. <laughs> Half a second, let's call it that. Um, you can go, go back and watch that at Summer Games Done Quick 2016. I've been at this way too dang long. Um, <laughs> started all this in 2013. Okay, any other last questions? Windows XP, we can still do single threaded. And uh, we're using a single threaded variant of the PCEM environment. Uh, but we don't really want to scale to anything farther than Windows XP, largely because Vista was, well, let's just stop talking. So the question is, how do we, how do, we do task runs on more modern systems? Uh, we don't ever, ever want to do anything more than that. We would much prefer to use LibTask directly. LibTask is a Linux environment. By the way, I am presenting all of this from Linux. Um, all of the stuff that I've shown you it has to be done in Linux. Uh, it's, it sounds kind of weird that in order to make Windows happen, you have to use Linux. Now, you can get circular on this. You can put Windows 95 in PCEM inside of LibTAS, inside of Ubuntu, or in my case, Linux Mint, inside of the Windows subsystem uh, of, uh, for Linux, uh, WSL, inside of Windows 11, if you want to. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> uh, WSL 2, I don't care. You do, I don't know what you Windows folks do. <laughs> so, I, I'm a Linux Mint shill, sorry. Uh, or at least a Cinnamon desktop environment shill. Uh, until, uh, until Cosmos comes out, anyway. Or Cosmic. What's that? Uh, yeah, well, you know. Uh, so basically, if you want to do something more modern than Windows XP, we would prefer to just do it inside of LibTask directly. Uh, and we can potentially put Wine itself inside of LibTask, where there are some ways to do that. It's not a great idea. But anyway, somebody over there had their hand up. Nope, okay. Last call for questions. Uh, honestly, I now have a reputation for the being the one doing this, so, <laughs> which, the, the Wired article oversold it. I, I, it's, not my, it's not my passion to find cheaters. Um, I would say OmniGamer's research into disassembling all of Dragster just to show Todd Rogers cheated was probably a, a really good example of that. And there are plenty more. Um, there are certainly videos out there by, by folks on YouTube. I assume that at a certain point more will come out about this. Uh, especially if Guinness responds in the way I hope they will. Uh, but you can find all kinds of amazing glitches inside of games that become amazing presentations of their own. If you have not watched it, go watch Legend of Zelda Triforce Percent. It's, I, I hear people going, oh yeah, there's a reason for that. I'm not just trying to brag for myself. Our very own MAGFest volunteer, staff volunteer, Soren, runs a lot of lights here at MAGWest was the director of the Triforce Percent Project in Ocarina of Time. It is the most incredible thing you may ever see. It is the most amazing spectacle of using glitches in a game to create something amazing. It is its own art form, and I highly recommend you watch it. Just be prepared, it might make you cry. Uh, but it, <laughs> yep, <laughs> but it is amazing. Uh, especially if you have any fondness for any of the Legend of Zelda series games. Okay, last call. No, you'll have one game seed that produces all of the dungeon seeds at once. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think I am going to wrap up because we're like way, way over. But thank you so much for coming to my TED Talk. I mean, my. Um, <laughs> 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 thank you.
Thank you. Have a wonderful night.